Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're talking combos for Inosuke Hashiraba Entertainment District style. Now, just like Entertainment Tanjiro, Entertainment Inosuke has basically two combo routes he's going to be taking depending on whether the opponent is in the air or on the ground. If the opponent is on the ground and you want to keep them on the ground, that's when you're going to be going for your mix-ups. And we'll talk about the mix-ups quickly after we talk about combos, but his mix-ups are super strong, so it's definitely something I recommend going for. They're super strong, super guaranteed, and can lead to a, a super amount of damage. So even if you've just done a super simple combo like this on the ground, you can reconfirm into another slice and dice, and then go into more combos like this, and just uh, so much Inosuke madness. And it'll do a lot of damage, and we'll talk about mix-ups after this. But uh, yeah, if the opponent's on the ground, you're just gonna do a bunch of attacks into your slice and dice, and do a bunch of attacks into your slice and dice, and decide whenever you want to go for a mix-up. Now, if your opponent is in the air, that's when his damage kind of starts getting insane. So if you get a regular hit and you want to start cashing out, you might start doing things like this. Slice and dice into slice, and slice and dice, and you can actually get a free dash up after that. Slice and dice in the air, free dash up, and then get your aerial attack string in the air. Get a hard knockdown still after all of that. 4,300 damage, you get a hard knockdown to build back a bunch of feeder. It is so good. It's so good. And it's all thanks to how good Slice and Dice is as a combo extender in the air. So um, I'll just show like, if the opponent happens to be in the air when you're attacking them, maybe they've jumped or maybe your support like Zenitsu has put the opponent in the air. You can cash out like crazy for some reason. Like that was half the opponent's life and a hard knockdown just for some simple little combo that I just made up in my head. Just because the opponent was in the air. And yes, yeah, so aerial attacks into slice and dice is kind of like a win condition for Inosuke because it just does so much damage. It is ridiculous. Look at that. I just did the same thing over and over again and it did over half of the opponent's life bar. It is ridiculous. So make sure you're super paying attention to if the opponent happens to be in the air while you're attacking them, Slice and dice and get up in the air and start doing your slice and dices in the air because it is just so crazy. So crazy how much damage you can get off of that. And that's basically um, combo wise all there is to Inosuke. Just make sure you're going for your crazy aerial combo paths because damn, they're just so damn good. Um, and if you're on the ground, make sure you know if you can be going for your mix up. See, look at that. That, like, did over half the opponent's life bar, I still get a hard knockdown just because the opponent happened to be in the air. It's ridiculous, and they're so easy to do. And, um, yeah, if you beep your, keep your opponent on the ground, you can start going for your mix-ups, which we are going to try and talk about pretty quickly because I did go over depth, uh, in-depth with them in the full Inosuke guide. But basically, he has a few options, and they mainly come after his slice and dice. Or we'll quickly talk about the gimmicky one. The gimmicky one is if you've scared your opponent a lot and they're just blocking for the for their lives. Wait, let me control Sabito. This is where it gets a bit tricky. So if the opponent is just blocking for their lives, they've started going, getting scared of your stuff. You can just like randomly throw out your Palisade Bite, which is your unblockable, and just go f get some free combo resets like that. Just at the, any point in your combo, because it's unblockable. If the opponent is blocking, then GG's, you just get some combos, I guess. Um, but, uh, where his resets become, and his mix-ups become more real and terrifying, is after you do some kind of grounded combo into your slice and dice, and or you end your combo in slice and dice, you either can go into a practically guaranteed grab, or into a, another slice and dice. And both of these options cover a bunch of the opponent's options, so it's a really, really dangerous game of rock, paper, scissors, where it is definitely leaning in Inosuke's favor, because all of the options kind of favor him more than they favor the, the opponent, which is really, really terrifying. And as you can see, if you fall for either of them, you're taking over the opponent, half of the opponent's life, obviously more if you get to do a combo. So what is so good about these? If the opponent is trying to mash or jump or sidestep or do anything, Going for your slice and dice into another slice and dice will catch them doing anything that isn't blocking. It is ridiculous. It even beats the opponent going into into their DPs because the DP most DP startup isn't fast enough to beat. Um, so as you saw that, Sabito went for his whirlpool, but the invincibility didn't start early enough for it to beat him out of this. 
so he just got completely beat for it. So the opponent just has to stand there and block. So that is super powerful, and as you saw, if you get a slice and dice, you just get to go into a combo. So if they try to um, press buttons or do anything, or jump, move at, at all, anything that doesn't block, you get to go into a full new combo and do whatever you freaking like. This isn't optimal, but this is just an example of something you could do. And then obviously the opponent is going to start being a little bit more respectful, and then that's where the grab option comes in. So say I've ended my full combo, and this, I can just grab the opponent. Now this grab also beats basically every option. It'll beat mashing, it'll beat DPs and armor attacks, and sidesteps, and most jumps, in fact. The only way you can escape this grab at the end of a combo is by perfectly timing a jump directly upwards. I was just trying it there with Sabito and I messed it up. You need perfect timing and you need to jump directly upwards or else there'll be a micro step that, that um, uh, makes your jump take a little bit longer. Okay, I messed it up there again. Let me see if I can actually get it. But you can technically dodge the, uh, the grab. Yeah, there we go. So if you have perfect timing, you can jump over the grab. And luckily, because you're doing a neutral jump, you can probably land and get a punish on the grab by doing some kind of, you know, cool combo like this. Which is cool, but you have to be on point, and that's the only way you can dodge this grab, which is kind of ridiculous, if you ask me. Even if you have an ultimate... Um, how do I give myself an ultimate? Do -do 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 -do. Um, if I do this... Oops, I matched the ultimate too quickly. But basically, the ultimate can't even start up in time to beat the grab. So, going for this grab at the end of your combos is nigh guaranteed. Okay, if you do the grab faster, the ultimate can't come out. Um, so that's pretty terrifying. So any kind of grounded combo you do, whether it's short or long, gets a free unscaled grab at the end of it, unless the opponent can manage to jump out of it perfectly. Which means basically any hit you do is going to do over 50% of the opponent's life bar, and that's if they take the safe option, which is taking the grab. If they don't take the grab and they take the combo, then you're going to do well over 50%. And um, there is one sneaky advanced technique that your opponent can use to get away from these mix-ups, and that is by doing the character switch. And let me just show you what that looks like if the opponent actually does is trying to do it. So uh, the opponent is trying to switch here. And I tried it. Oh, I don't know why that lagged so much. But if I do go for my slice and dice again, basically the opponent's sidekick will drop down on the opposite side, and punish you for going for the slice and dice, which is very, very bad. And they, you can't go for an armor attack or anything because they fall behind you. And they basically just punish anything you do, unless you are going for your grab mix-up. If the opponent is trying to do this situation and you're going for the grab, it's actually really cool. It catches Sabito as he's trying to jump off the screen and yanks him back down and grabs him. Tanjiro has actually jumped off the screen and it costs them half of their support gauge. So it's actually really good. If you see your opponent is trying to like break out of your combo by doing this, you can see because it fills up that little gauge in the top right. You can see like as they press it down, which is really, really handy. So then you can go for the grab and this will take a bunch of their meters, which means the next hit that you do... Um, oops, I messed it up. But the next hit that you do will... They won't be able to break out of, so you get a free combo next time you hit them because they've used their support. And you just caught them out of trying to punish you and you punish them for trying to do it. It's really, really, really good. And yeah, because they don't have any gauge, the next time you hit them, you get to do your full juicy Inosuke combos, and there's nothing they can do about it, unless they have instant support gauge like I do in training mode. So that is very, very, very powerful, and what is kind of ironic is the kind of the, um, Oh, actually, and quickly, what is also really ridiculous is this stuff all applies on block as well after the slice and dice. This grab is guaranteed after slice and dice in the same way that it is on hit, which is kind of ridiculous. So as you can see, even if the opponent is holding down to switch, Inosuke grabs them before just Sabito jumps off the screen and the opponent just cannot escape, which means even if you've done a full combo and the opponent does decide to like play patiently, and you make the wrong decision. So like say, you know, I don't even go for the grab reset. I just go for this because I try to reset them. But he blocks here, but I just get to go for a free grab anyways. He te can technically do the same jump out of it, but like, 
That is ridiculous. You can get over 50% whether you guess right or wrong. It is kind of really, really, really crazy. And, um, yep. Yeah. What is kind of ironic is that the one option that would beat Inosuke, Inosuke can actually beat the opponent using the fancy techniques that they were using. So if I am trying to go for my slice and dice resets and the opponent goes for an ultimate, which would punish me, and that I, there's nothing I can do about it, well, I can actually use their own techniques against them. I can go for... and switch into my character and punch them, uh, punish them just how they did to me. <laughs> Which I think is just kind of cool. <laughs> you can use the same technique they did to punish them for trying to punish you. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stop talking about the mix-ups now because there's so much I could talk about them. But as you can see, they're very, very powerful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.